Hello everyone, this is Jake, your resident content cowboy here. Yee-haw! And I am back with another Pokemon Unite guide. A guide for what is widely considered one of the most overpowered Pokemon. You must nerf him, they say. He's too powerful, they say. S-tier, they yell. Are they right? We will talk about it in this guide. We will go over Zeraora's move set, common held items you can use, battle items, and we're gonna take a look at some gameplay footage and see just how broken this little electric cat is. He's a cat, right? Those look like cat claws and cat feet. He's a cat. I'll say a quick thank you to everyone who's liking and commenting and subscribing on my videos. It's really nice. I really appreciate it. And I'm so happy to continue making content like this. So thank you all very much. Now, let's put this cat in a bath. Uh, actually, I, I don't know what that means. That's not an expression that I've ever heard. Let's put this cat in a bath. Let's just move on. Zeraora is a melee speedster Pokemon with a difficulty rating of expert. First of all, I'll say that I actually don't think Zeraora is an expert level Pokemon. There are other Pokemon that are expert level that I think kind of earn that moniker. I think Zeraora is actually pretty basic. And I'm not saying basic in a bad way. I think he's pretty good. Let's take a look at his moves here. Level one and three, you pick between agility and slash. I would almost always go slash. Agility's good. It gives you a dash and a basic attack speed increase, but slash just does a little chunk damage so you can get rid of some of those neutral creeps a little bit faster. And of course, you level so fast in this game that it's not a huge difference, but I'd take slash before I take agility. At level six, your agility gets switched with one of two moves, either Volt Switch or Spark. Let's talk about Volt Switch first. Zeraora performs a high-speed dash, dealing damage to the opposing Pokemon it hits and increasing the user's basic attack speed for a short time. Using this move again within a set period of time will allow you to immediately dash back to where it originally used the move. Out of the two, this is the one I prefer, although I do think both are good and both have their uses. Also, when this move upgrades at level 12, it increases its damage and the amount of time your basic attack speed increase lasts. This move can get you in and out of ultra sticky situations, MacGruber, and it can also set up your next attacks. It has a crazy long range too. I mean, it's infinite, essentially. It's as far as you can go, you can dash back to. Let me show you. Right here, I'm heading up to this little crawdaunt. I use my Volt Switch, run all the way down, and Volt Switch all the way back. Huge range. You can see it here as well, Volt Switching through these enemies, and then when I wanna head back, boom, heading all the way back. Your other option is Spark. Spark has you leap at an opposing Pokemon while electrically charged, dealing damage to them. If you use a basic attack while you're leaping, you basically hone in like a magnet on the target and deal damage to it. You can use this move three times before it goes on cooldown. This is what's happening when you see Zeraora hopping around like a weirdo. I don't prefer this move. I think it's a little more difficult to use, but that just could mean it has a higher skill ceiling and players who are better might vastly prefer Spark. The nice thing about this is it has three charges. I don't love that the cooldown is higher and I just find Volt Switch to be easier to use and give you a better escape. Here's me using Spark to chase down this pesky Cinderace. <laughs> Silly rabbit. Tricks are for cats. No, that's not a saying either. This is when the power creep comes in. Your other moves really help you gank pretty well, but once you get discharge or wild charge, things really turn on for Zera Aura. Let's talk about discharge. Hmm, let's talk about discharge. Sounds kind of gross. Okay, releases an electrical discharge, dealing damage to nearby opposing Pokemon and granting the user a shield when it hits. If this move hits opposing Pokemon that are paralyzed, it pulls them toward the user once the move ends, dealing damage to them once again and leaving them unable to act. And once it upgrades at level 14, it decreases the movement speed of opposing Pokemon for a short time when this move hits. This is that electric field you see around Zeraora, and it is so... Good. I love Discharge. Sounds gross, but I'll say it again. I love Discharge. You can quote me on that. It does combo with Zeraora's basic boosted attack. If the Pokemon is paralyzed, it pulls them in after Discharge is done and deals additional damage. I think it also combos with Pikachu, which is pretty cool, but I don't use it for the combo. I use it for the Aura of Death. Let's talk about Wild Charge. 
The user charges in the designated direction. If this move hits an opposing Pokemon, the user unleashes a combo attack that also deals a set amount of damage to the Pokemon itself. If the user hits an opposing Pokemon with Volt Switch, Spark, or a boosted attack before using this move, the number of attacks in the combo is increased. You've seen this move. This is where Zara Aura looks like a team of ninjas popping up out of nowhere and striking your opponents. It's pretty cool. Wild Charge seems to also make you immune to damage for a short period. Let's take a look. Right here, when your health bar disappears, I believe you cannot be hurt for that brief period of the attack. It's small, but if everyone's jumping into a team fight and you take a moment to be untargetable, that could be pretty beneficial. Now we have Zara Aura's ult, Plasma Gale, unleashes a blast of lightning, dealing damage to the opposing Pokemon in the area of effect and throwing him. It also creates a zone of plasma that increases the user's basic attack range and damage dealt while the user's inside the zone. So you want to throw this down in an area where you want to fight and destroy everyone inside. I don't think this Unite move is bad by any means, but this is not the most interesting part of Zara Aura's moveset to me. Taking a look at the rest of Zara Aura, its passive ability is Volt Absorb. The Pokemon gains an electric charge whenever it receives damage, converting a portion of that damage into additional attack. Let me show you what I believe that looks like. So right here, you can see Zara Aura attacks for 540 total damage. Now I'm going to head on up here to this Ludicolo. Move, Zara Aura go i gotta fill time while i'm talking and you can see the little electricity flowing around me and then i hit this substitute dummy for 592 total damage well of course it's not something that you can count on but it's a nice little buff and your basic attack becomes a boosted attack with every third attack increasing damage when it hits and also paralyzes opposing pokemon and restores the user's hp so this boosted attack combos specifically with the discharge ability on to battle items you know what i say it's up to you baby i think it Eject button is the way to go. Smoke might be a good call. Also, the ability to score goals faster could be good, but it's your call. I will not make it for you. Pick a Jack button. Let's talk about held items for Zara Aura. I have a guide on my channel with which held items I think are generally good for a lot of Pokemon. So I'm putting that build to use here on Zara Aura with a float stone, a muscle band, and a buddy barrier. I think buddy barrier is probably the best item in the game. And I think it's good on just about anybody. However, it might not be best on speedsters who are in the jungle coming out for ganks. I think on defense, Defenders, all-rounders, a lot of attackers, Buddy Barrier is pretty amazing. HP is always good, and the ability it uses can help you win team fights. A few options for Zara Aura. Scopelens wouldn't be my first choice. Neither would Shell Bell, although the cooldown is nice. You might go with an attack weight here or a focus band. Maybe if you've leveled up your energy amplifier, that could be a good item to use on Zara Aura. A score shield also might be nice for a Pokemon like this. I'd say if you want to swap out that buddy barrier, an attack weight or a shell bell might be a good call. All right, now let's put that cat to bed and take a look at some gameplay footage here. I am jungling with Zara Aura and I notice my Pikachu is getting dived on here, so I head on up. I start with agility to get close and then I use my slash and this one decides to run and you're able to chase him down. He gets that berry too. Come on. Go, go, go. Got him with the slash. Zara Aura is just so, so quick. He's able to get to anybody and then we can come down here and disrupt this encounter as well. That's probably his biggest strength. I mean, I know he is a speedster, but man, he moves around the map so quick from lane to lane. He can really help your team out. Hey, there's another Zara Aura. Small world, huh? Right here, we can see that I came down to help this Snorlax with Dreadnought, which is probably good because I think this person would have had a lot of trouble on their own. These neutral big event Pokemon, Rotom, Deadnaw, Zapdos, it's really, really important. So make sure that you're with your team and you are taking them out. That's kind of your job as anybody inside this match, but Zara Aura specifically because you can move so fast and deal with wild Pokemon so well. Something I don't love about a Volt Switch Wild Charge build is every once in a while, it'll decide that you wanted to target that Machamp instead of that Zara Aura, just because I guess I missed it slightly. I like Discharge more. It's a lot easier to work with. But again, it's possible that Wild Charge just has a higher skill ceiling, and I prefer the easier option, which is Volt Switch and Discharge. 
Although here's a nice example of dashing out with Volt Switch, then coming back in with Wild Charge to do a ton of damage. So it is a great combination. That Wild Charge does an insane... By the way, look at me recalling right there in front of all of them. What an insane move! But that combination is really, really strong. I like Wild Charge. I don't love it. I love Discharge. <laughs> you could quote me on it. I love Discharge, but Wild Charge is really great. This build, Discharge Volt Switch, is my favorite. This is actually an interesting match because I had to spend it laning. Someone picked Gengar at the last minute, and I know how this game goes. When someone has decided they want to go in the jungle, me walking over there isn't going to change their mind, so I might as well not fight for it. And I played Zera in the lane. I actually think Zera Aura is great in the lane. I was surprised because I think Zera Aura is really great in the jungle as well, but here we are with Zera Aura in the lane. Let me show you a couple nice moves. First of all, as I mentioned earlier, help your team secure these objectives. Gengar can destroy these by himself, solo, Dreadnought, Zapdos, Rotom, all of it, but obviously hop in and help your team take those objectives. Something to keep in mind with a Pokemon like Zeraora and Gengar, they're both really great, but if they miss their ability, it's kind of over. So you'll notice, I'll show you a couple moments in this match where the enemy Zeraora leaps in, pops his discharge, and I just move away. And I wait for his discharge to end, and then I jump in. By the way, look at that. Look at him shred those combis. This exchange is a good example, so don't let this happen to you as a Zera Aura. He pops his Discharge, I just leave. He then uses his Unite move. I just leave again, and then once it's done, I put on my Discharge, and I follow him, and I take him out. It's that simple. When you're dealing with a Zera Aura or a Gengar, just watch out for their big spam of a move, and once it's done or you've avoided it, then you can head in and deal with them. Oh, this isn't a good Zera Aura play. This is just a good Snorlax play by them. I love this. He just blocks me and pushes me back into their lane. How fun is that? That was great. Here's a great example of what to do and what not to do. So this Zera Aura jumps in at me, pops his discharge. I just walk away from it. I pop back in, get my discharge on them after his escape is gone. And then I take out him and Eldegoss at the same time. Those are the situations you're looking for. Let them throw down whatever is going to hurt you severely. Then move around that. Once they have no escape, hop in and take them out. So there you go. A Zera Aura build guide. I hope this helped you. I really think Zera Aura is pretty incredible. And now I will give you my verdict on whether or not I believe Zera Aura is OP. You ready? I do not. I don't. I think once people start to understand the game a little bit better, they'll see that Zera Aura is pretty predictable and very telegraphed. However, it can go across the map with crazy amounts of speed, and it does do some really good damage. I like Zera Aura, and Zera Aura is very, very good. I hope this guide helps you play an even better Zera Aura. If you play Zera Aura now, I'm curious what your build looks like, and what is that phrase that I'm looking for? Cats in the cradle and the silver spoon? Who knows? Little boy blue and the man on the moon. I will see you all next time. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Goodbye. Mwah.